Hello there, well, in this uh, video today I will try to optimize my VR game for Oculus Quest. I will walk through what uh, works and what doesn't, but first of all let me show you how my game looks now. As you can see it's some weird survival on one place, you can teleport not even, I don't know who even made that game. And it looks so far so good, um, I, I'm kinda happy with it, but the problem is how it looks in Oculus Quest. So let me show you that. And let's mute it. You can see that uh, lighting pretty much doesn't work. Small effects and everything else is pretty fine and performance isn't that bad. It may st uh, shatter a little bit here, but that's simply because I'm recording on that Oculus Quest wirelessly at the same time. Okay, sound is <laughs> sound doesn't work as well. It works and uh, it all works in the game. The problem is all, uh, only with recording. So main problem you can see is lighting definitely doesn't work, and when and somewhere there should be a torch. And that doesn't work as well. Uh, one of the first things I have done, and you also need to do, is to go to project setting and find here forward rendering. Uh, simply write here forward, and there you will see forward rendering and enable forward shading. That's that will increase performance of your game about 20-30% without the problem. In, in Unreal you have two different kind of renderers, one is called a Defender I believe and the other one is a Forward Renderer. And for uh, VR games, because you need as much performance as possible, always use Forward Renderer. So next thing I will have to do, and, then, and now we are getting to stage where I'm just testing stuff out, huh? so we will see what will work, and I will walk you through that. Okay, uh, um, uh, Oculus Quest works on Android, so I will have to go to Android and f uh, rename my company because my company is not gonna make your company because it's my company, not your company. And everything else is pretty much cool. You, will, I will have to uh, da -da -da, enable. Oh, I actually don't think I need to enable Google Play services because I am not going to publish the game on Google Play. Maybe on Oculus Quest or on Oculus Store, but primarily it will be on SideQuest, of course. And then I don't think anything uh, like this needs to be set up. Target hardware. You need to get to target hardware right here from start and set it to mobile and tablet maximum and set it uh, maximum quality set to scalable 3D or 2D. So right now it should just turn off all the really expensive stuff for uh, uh, engines. So it should uh, work much better right now. So apply it and it will probably have to restart. One thing I forgot to tell you, once you enable that forward shading, uh, you need to restart editor and it will be opening for quite a long time, maybe 20, 30 minutes, depends on your project. And then it will need to recompute all your shaders. So it's something you can let uh, to work overnight or something like that if you have as weak computer as I. There's one more thing that will actually increase uh, your frame rate quite a lot, which is just what we want for our Oculus. Uh, and that will be navitization. I'm probably saying it wrong. Let me show you what it is actually is. It's blueprint navitization method. Hopefully I pronounce it correctly right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, by default it will be probably set to disabled and you need to set it to inclusive or exclusive. I'm setting it to inclusive because I don't have that many blueprints. What it does is to take all code that you have in blueprints and convert it to C++, which should increase your performance as well. Uh, there are three methods. Disabled is by default and that will do, that won't do it uh, at all, which means all your code will stay in blueprints, which is a little bit slower. And you can set it to inclusive, which means that all your code will be set uh, and uh, which I was, I am, which is something, <laughs> ah, nice, which is something I will do. And I would recommend you to do as well and all you can set it to exclusive and uh, set which default uh, which uh, blueprints will be set to uh, convert but I will set it inclusive. Okay after some testing I've discovered I need to decrease lighting much more than I wished or uh, hoped so let's set uh, this I IES lighting uh, from main light to about a half and then the rest of it was pretty much okay. Okay, another thing is that uh, my light from uh, that uh, blueprint doesn't work again. So, however, it doesn't matter if you use movable light, static light or whatever. Uh, so what I will do is probably to create emissive material which will shine by itself. That should pretty much solve the problem. And it shouldn't be that performance heavy, so let's see how it will work. Okay, emissive material, bad idea. Not gonna work, okay? I just tried it, not gonna work. 
it can possibly work, but uh, it is so expensive because you have to use a lot of post-process effects, etc, etc. Not worth it on mobile devices. So, good news is that I have figured out how to do it. Actually, it's uh, quite stupid that I didn't figure it out sooner, but at least I hope, I hope it will be helpful for you now. Uh, simply go to project setting, light, right there, light, and there is mobile shader permutation reduction, I believe, yeah. And right there, make sure that support, uh, that you have enabled support movable spotlight. Yep, it's simple as that, you just need to enable it in setting. I haven't found any huge performance hits when I enable it, so hopefully it's not the problem. Okay, uh, before in the video, I have recommend you to enable navitization, but I have noticed that sometimes there are problems with uh, packaging the project. Once you use navitization, it, mo it may have been caused by something else or me or by me doing something really stupid. But I have discovered that once I disable navitization, it actually works. So you may want to play with it a little bit. I know it's a bit confusing information, but I'm pretty sure that you will figure it out. You are pretty smart, right? And now just briefly, in Android setting you probably already have this, but just to make sure, there is minimum SDK version and target SDK version, you need to set both on 25 for Oculus Quest, and then you can uh, store all the data inside APK, which is what I have done, because it's simpler, but uh, you can also allow it to save it in OBB, just like in normal Google Android game, and do it this way. I don't have experience with that, so I'm not really sure which one is better, to be completely honest. Another thing, enable full screen immersive on KitKat and above Davises, and because Quest has above KitKat Android, you need to enable that, just to be sure. And uh, even though I have uh, real, I have uh, discovered that it works even if, if you don't have it enabled, but on official Oculus uh, Quest documentary, that it is uh, recommended to enable it. So. That's what I can. An important thing where I, uh, right, where, right where you have advanced uh, APK packaging, there is package for Oculus mobile devices. You need to adhere one and set it as I did to Oculus Quest. And then simply remove Oculus signature file from distribution APK. Make sure that it's all, it is all enabled and leave it at that. Last tip I would like to give you is uh, when you are packaging your project, right here in file package project, uh, when you can package it for under, just make sure that packaging setting is set to shipping for your last package and set under and if with if these settings, definitely don't use this one because it takes a whole lot of time. And I've, I have decided to use a STC. It should be high, highest quality of uh, materials and it will be probably bigger than you want. At least those files will be bigger. I've, I have tried also ETC1, which worked, and ATC. ATC had the smallest file, but textures packaged with ATC didn't look that well as with ETC1. Uh, there is probably some kind of compression. And with ETC1, there was a problem with AI. So for Oculus Quest, uh, it seems like as ASTC, this last one works best. So that's what I would recommend you to do. After that, you can put your game onto side quest. So let's look at it. There we go, the physics background, and somewhere here should be a right my game. Wonderful. And there is one more tip I wanna tell you before I will try to self pitch you this game <laughs> and that uh, once you will be uploading your game you will see there will be a link for direct APK and for that uh, you need to upload it to some site I have to choose the Dropbox and for that make sure that you uh, change some settings when you are uploading it for uh, from the Dropbox it will generate you this link but the difference is that in the end it will be zero and you need to set it to one if you are using it as direct link to download that APK from Dropbox, which is recommended, I would rec I would urge you, you probably need to do it really, to set it to one, right? like that it will, once you enter it, start uh, downloading that APK. Okay, and that's about that, and let's get to my sales pitch. So, uh, sales pitch is just that uh, you have maybe already seen this trailer, if you want, you can play my VR game that I have just finished, and you have seen this whole documenting series about, there's a link somewhere in the description, or you can just find it in uh, the Oculus uh, Quest, side quest, of course. And that's about it, everything. I hope that I helped you in any way to optimize your game for side quest, and that's about everything. Surfancy out.